Hello, welcome back again to English Professional Uno or Professional English One. Again with the same topic, present simple. Today, in this session, we are going to deal with the uses, word order, and verb forms of the present simple uh, and some exercises. In the present simple, we need to express things to talk about universal statement. That means that a thing and a situation or whatever that will happen anyway. That means that um, it's a logical consequence of anything. For example, spring follows winter. No matter what, winter will come after wind, uh, before spring, or spring will come after winter. Okay? Up to the moment, um, not thinking in our uh, uh, global warming problems we are having, but probably we are going to have spring after winter for a long time. We also use present simple to talk about repeated actions at the present. For example, John plays tennis every Monday. Okay, this is a normal situation and every morning, uh, every Monday, sorry, every Monday, John goes to play tennis. Lucky him. Or talk about things that will be performer, performed, sorry, in the present period, she works in a museum, okay? Normally, she goes to work to a museum. Fixed arrangement of things, okay? Something that has been settled and uh, will not change normally. The bus leaves at, sorry, the bus leaves at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay, that means that tomorrow the bus is going to leave anyway, at tomorrow morning, actually, at 7 a.m. Uh, examples are something that happens regularly. We have fixed arrangement of things and universal statement. Just means son studies English very early every morning, the bus depart, departs. The bus depart is at 6 in the morning, hummingbirds fly backwards. Okay, uh, backwards is with a K between the C and the W. A declarative sentence in the present symbol will follow will have the pattern of subject, verb and complement. This is a kind of a rigid structure with some slight variations because of uh, another words or another parts that are added. For example, uh, adverbs of frequency. She drinks water every morning. Subject, verb and complement. She, subject, drinks the verb, the third person singular form of the verb, and water every morning is the complement or as some people call object. But actually, the object of the action of the verb, in this case, is water. Because what does she drink? The answer is water. So, is, this is one form we can use to find if there is an object in the sentence. An object of the action of the verb. She drinks water every morning. Okay. Okay, she's drinking water. In interrogative sentence, we need to use the auxiliary do or does according to the case. Again, we have the subject, the verb, and the complement. The subject is do, does. Uh, sorry, the subject is she, and uh, obviously the auxiliary is does. The verb goes in the simple form because we are using the auxiliary, and the complement is water every morning. Again, we have water as the object. Does she drink water every morning? 
Auxiliary, subject, verb, and complement. Auxiliary, subject, infinitive, and complement. ASIC, remember. For negative sentences, we have the same use of the corresponding auxiliary to the person. She is the third person singular, the auxiliary is does. The negative particle is not, the verb the, is drink, also in the infinitive, and the complement is water every morning. She does not drink water every morning. Okay? Contracted, it might become she doesn't drink water every morning. But remember, contractions are for informal English. We have a text, please. Try to find the mistakes here and correct them. You may find verbs wrong, wrongly written, or some words that are missing to give a complete and adequate form to this text. Let's see. The Clarks are family from Scotland. They is the parents and two boys, John and Bob. They live in a small village. The father is a bat and he knows a lot about plants and animals. The mother is a nurse. She looks after all people. They like animals and they have two dogs and a cat. Boys walk the dogs every day. They also like swim in the lake. Their parents don't swim very often. They rather doing gardening or they read books. Okay. Please just advance to the next slide when you have an answer to that. Here it comes. The Clarks are a family from Scotland. They are the parents and two boys, John and Bob. They live in a small village. The father is a vet and he knows a lot about plants and animal, animals. The mother is a nurse. She looks after all people. They like animals and they have two dogs and a cat. Boys walk the dogs every day. They also like swimming in the lake. Their parents don't swim very often. They rather do gardening or they read books. Okay, as you can see, missing words or incorrect forms of the verbs are in red. Okay. Please remember, we need to use the appropriate form after the subject. The third person singular, normally with an S or ES or whatever, and other forms in the simple form, in the infinitive form. Okay. When do we use the verb forms, or how can we make these verb forms? Okay, we use the verb form with an S for the third person singular, she, he, or it. Drink, she drinks, have, he has, come, it comes. As you can see, drink and come are regular verb because, regular verbs, because they need just S or ES at the end. In this case, just S. But have is an irregular verb and it needs to be changed to has in the third person singular. We need to add an es when the verb in the infinitive form ends in an s or in a double s, in an x, in an sh, in a ch, in a tch, or an o. Fix, she fixes, teach, he teaches, Splash, it splashes. When verbs end in a Y, preceded 
Bayer, consonant, we drop the Y and change it to I. Fancy, she fancies, study, she studies, carry, it carries. Ok? Preceded by a consonant, normally changes the Y to I. Ok, we have have and have got. Both will give information about possession or some particular uh, language forms. Let's see. In the third person, we need to use has or has got. Remember, have is an irregular verb and has is also an irregular auxiliary. Have is the simple form, have got is the present perfect form. She has breakfast every morning. Ok, in this case, the verb has is not given information about possession. Exactly. It goes with breakfast and it becomes a two word verb, have, have breakfast, in this case has breakfast, can be translated into Spanish as desayunar. And the same with she has got breakfast every day, has got breakfast can also be translated into Spanish as desayunar. For negative sentences, we add the particle not. In the first case, when, this, when we use the simple form of have, we need to use the auxiliary does. She does not have breakfast every day. She has not got breakfast every day. In this case, does not need an auxiliary because has is the auxiliary by itself. So, have will need does, but has got will not need the auxiliary. Ok? If we want to make uh, sentences using a different uh, grammar person, for example, we do not have breakfast every day. We have not got breakfast every day. Ok. For interrogative sentence, does she have breakfast every day? Has she got breakfast every day? Again, does is the auxiliary for the simple verb and has is the auxiliary for the present perfect form of have got. Again, remem uh, remember that have or has got are not uh, possessive uh, indicators, actually. For the imperative, we will give commands. And an imperative, normally in imperatives, the person, the, the subject is not needed. Come in. Do help me. You wait here. OK? The, the last imperative is kind of angry. We also can give offers and suggestions without using a subject. To have another cup of coffee is the same as saying please or uh, I advise you, you might, you have to, whatever. Do have another cup of toffee, coffee. Again, have another cup of coffee can be translated as tomar otra taza de café into Spanish. Have a seat. Again, is kind of a suggestion. Directional instruction. Turn left. Open your books. Keep silence. All these go in the present simple form. Ok? Remember. Thank you and I hope we are going to be to, to meet again next time.